about your background, your upbringing, siblings, family life, any interesting childhood stories? Before, before she starts, let me uh -huh. start. Start by saying your name and spell it for me. Okay. My name is Laurel Ritchie, Laurel J. Ritchie, and that's L-A-U-R-E-L-R-I-C-H-I-E. So I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, or right outside of Cleveland, Ohio, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Uh, I have one older brother and an older sister and a younger sister, so Winston Beth and my younger sister Anne. Um, let's see, interesting things about where I grew up. Um, the story that I love to tell is um, when I was in kindergarten, uh, my parents wanted to move from one part of Shaker Heights, Ohio to another part. And they found a piece of property that they loved and went to buy it. And the owners wouldn't sell it to them because they were African American. So a friend of theirs uh, bought the property and sold it to them at cost. And then we, my parents proceeded to build a house on that property. And that's the house that I grew up in. And it, um, it's always amazing to me that even in the early 60s, um, there were places in this country where African Americans had trouble um, um, gaining access. And I always tell that story because I like to believe I'm from a family of trailblazers. And I think my parents were constantly blazing new trails. Um, but. At five or six years old, I had no idea the backstory and didn't even know that story until I was probably uh, in junior high school. So your parents are obviously mentors or, or role models for you. Who were some of your other influences growing up? Yeah, you know, I, I just have to say that my parents were the single biggest influence uh, on me. My um, dad is a very public and active leader. He was vice mayor of the city. Uh, that I grew up in. He was a councilman for m many years. Um, and my mother was a very, was also a leader, but a very quiet leader. Uh, she uh, didn't work outside of the home when we were growing up. Uh, she served on a lot of community boards. Um, she kept um, four kids who were um, very high energy and very strong willed <laughs> moving in the same direction. Um, so it was definitely my parents, and I would say I had a couple of teachers along the way. I can still remember my first grade teacher, Ms. Hartung, making me feel very welcome and very um, special in her class. Uh, and I was not a very good math student and had a math, my fifth grade math teacher uh, had an uncanny way of making something that seemed very scary, uh, daunting, and difficult seem very simple. So. Uh, I will always remember her for that as well. And your, your first grade teacher made you feel special in what way? You know, I just remember thinking she was fascinated by everything I did. You know, I'd, I'm sure I was writing poems and stories and she thought they were interesting. She loved my drawings. I remember um, it was halfway through the school year when the year changed from like, uh, you know, 67 to 68, and I thought that was fascinating because I'm still in the same grade, but the year changed. And I can remember having this whole conversation with her about it and her sort of just rewarding me for being observant and curious. Um, and I think that's, she just, everything felt interesting to her. Okay. So, given what you know now as a full grown woman, what Still advice? a work in process as a full grown woman, but yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to the 13 year old woman, given what you know now? Yeah, I would say um, if I could give advice to myself uh, at 13 or the young woman that I was, first would be uh, to have to trust my instincts more. Um, I think at 13 I was probably. Um, more focused on what other people thought of me rather than sort of developing myself and developing my own um, sense of direction. Um, to have fun, you know, I think I was always and still am a little bit of a serious uh, little girl or a serious woman and I think, you know, taking time to enjoy things and have a little bit of fun and uh, worry less and enjoy more. Um, and to, to find uh, or pursue what makes you happy. I think at 13 I was still 
doing a lot of things that other people wanted me to do or things that I should do, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you also need to balance that with things that you want to do. Well, were there any major influences that impacted your career decisions? Yes. I, uh, when I was in college, I spent um, a good part of my spare time taking uh, dance classes and theater classes and involved in theater productions. And I learned a lot from that. I learned the power of a team coming together. You know, to me, there's nothing better than a cast and crew who starts out on day one not knowing each other, not knowing the material, not knowing the play, nobody's memorized their lines. And you're working together um, to create both the emotional connections but also sort of the physical stuff of the theater. So I love theater from the standpoint of um, giving me or helping me acquire skills about building teams and being part of a team and um, showing up and bringing my best self both for me but for the good of the larger group. And it also helped me get very comfortable in front of large audiences. So just this weekend I did a talk in front of 3,000 people and you hear that number and you think, oh my gosh. But my theater background, I can, I, you know, I know you can get through this. You've done this before, so um, I'm comfortable in front of crowds because of that. And your position prior to coming on board WNBA? Prior to joining the WNBA, I was chief marketing officer, the first ever chief marketing officer of the Girl Scouts of the USA. I had been a Girl Scout growing up and very much. Um, enjoyed that experience. You know, I can remember a little red wagon going door to door selling Girl Scout cookies and, you know, I learned a lot. I remember I had a little um, metal box where I kept all of the money from the Girl Scout cookie sale and, you know, would come home after every visit in the neighborhood and count my money and reconcile the number of boxes I had and the number I'd sold and how much money. Um, I remember um, having to learn how to approach strangers and introduce myself and make the sale. You know, I think it's no small coincidence that I spent a career in marketing based on that Girl Scout experience. What are your, your fears and how do you push through you? Yeah, my biggest fear is always the fear of failure. You know, I worry that I'm not going to do something right or I'm not going to do something well or that I might um, fall short of my goal. Um, the only way I've learned to get through it is, there's a quote that I have in my office, and I can't remember who it's by, but um, it says, start anywhere. So whenever I'm paralyzed or feeling like, oh gosh, I don't know how to start, I don't know if this is gonna work, just to get started, and I find once you get started, you can usually finish up and just keep continuing. Um, and I've also learned to say, what's the worst that can happen if I fail? You know, I get up the next day and try it again, and so that helps me take the pressure off of myself and take some of the, some of the fear out of it. And, and what's your, your personal philosophy of life? Hmm. Well, one is that uh, one thing I really believe and sort of try to live my life by the principle of um, in every moment you get to make a choice and whether that's what I'm going to eat today. So I can go to a restaurant and I can choose to have like, you know, a fully loaded cheeseburger and fries and pay the price for that or I can have a salad with the dressing on the side and to be as conscious as I can in every moment about the choices that I make and not to beat myself up if I've made a bad choice uh, but to sort of move on from that. Um, I love the Gandhi quote of be the change you wish to see in the world. I think that inspires me to um, create the world in which I want to live rather than feel like I have to live in a world that is defined um, by other people. What's the, the best advice you can give to young girls in general and then young girls of color? Best advice I could give to young girls, um, not to be too hard on yourselves, to trust your instincts, um, to develop your self-confidence and to know that you are highly valued and that you matter um, and that your feelings are valid feelings. 
um, to take control of your life and not let other people define it. And I don't know that I would give significantly different advice to young girls of color. I think um, the things that unite us as women um, are greater than those that separate us um, by ethnicity. And if there's one inspirational person in your life you'd have to identify, One would be hard. I think the, the, the most, no, that's not even true, the most inspiring. I, it, I've been very blessed to have a lot of very inspirational people in my life. Um, I come from a very uh, long line of what I think are amazing females, very talented, strong, beautiful, um, competent, graceful, loving women. Um, my dad has had an incredible impact on my life. You know, I look like my dad. I have my dad's sense of humor. I've got my dad's sense of moxie. We both talk too much, so I got a lot, you know, he's modeled the way for what this DNA, how this DNA shows up in the world. Um, I find, I don't have children, but I am um, deeply inspired by uh, my one nephew and four nieces who are, um, bright, curious, direct, creative, challenging uh, young people. And you talk about your dad. I've heard you speak uh, highly about your father. Mm -hmm. That's a great segue for, for another question. How do you think having the influence of a, of a dad, a father, uh, has helped you in your life? The impact um, that my dad has had on my life, I, I don't even, I, I can't even begin to measure it. You know, he is, um, he's a very large man. So my dad's like about six, he's over six feet tall and a really solid guy with a very um, booming voice and very charismatic personality. Um, but with us as kids, he was a very gentle giant. Um, and very accepting, you know, when others were feeling great pressure from their parents to do well in school and do all the right things, my dad always encouraged us to go out, to have fun, to be ourselves, to find our way of um, showing up in the world. Um, he also um, had this just incredible belief that we would do great things. Even if we didn't know it yet, or if we couldn't articulate what it was going to be, he just had this belief that you will be great. And if you grow up with that every day, you just start doing things that people say, wow, that's great. And you're like, huh, I guess it is. But I think that a lot of that came from him.